dogs. Everyone loves a good doggo, so why not try to get through Warhammer 3 with just an army of dogs? Well, that's what we're going to try today, and who better to lead an army of dogs than... Uh, Throg? I mean, hear me out, he, he looks a bit like a dog, he's got a bit of a bulldog face, he probably smells like a dead dog, and his name rhymes with dog, so who better? And maybe a little bit because Norsk is the only faction with a lot of dog units. Okay, let's go! So we of course kick off this Wintertooth campaign in Norska, and the first order of business is to rid ourselves of anything that is not doggo. With such a small army, I do need to fall back and recruit as quickly as possible though, which luckily is very easy. With a tier 1 building, we can get Norsk and Warhounds. And then at tier 3, we can get Ice Wolves and Skin Wolves, one of my favourite units in the game, and a Werkin Hero as well. So we don't have too long to wait before we can get ourselves a Doggo army. And I'm starting to recruit already. The Ailing faction is around though with a pretty large army, so I'm trying to be careful of that. And then guess who else wants to come and get me? It's old Chariot Boy Surfer X. So things are looking a little bit bleak at this point, especially as both armies seem to look like they're going to roll up on me until... The ailing suddenly decide that they want peace with me. They've realized that we've just got a cute bunch of doggos and they don't want to kill them. So I take that peace and focus on the Varg for now, who I try to set up an ambush for, which does fail, but we've got our first battle. We've got a little help from the garrison. Let's see what we can do with just doggo. I waited for my reinforcements to arrive, but the enemy had a nice defensive hill position that would make me fight uphill, and they were not moving from it. I needed to find a way to get them down. So I had to use one of the oldest, most powerful tactics in military warfare, be sick on them, and then run away. This obviously infuriated them enough to make them chase after me and bring their army down off that hill. Mission accomplished. I then sent the infantry in first of all to try and do most of the damage, had some doggos nearby for support, flanked around with some other doggos, and if you want to make this video more fun, maybe play a drinking game and take a shot every time I say doggo, you will be dead by the end of the video. Doggo, 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 doggo. All right, you should be having a good time now. You're welcome. I had a small party of dogs over on the left, dealing with some cavalry and a few units out wide, but for the most part, everything was fixed in the center here. The infantry definitely helped to hold things in place as it would survive better than the doggos, which gave me time to flank around and start to envelop everything and to stack up those leadership penalties of attacked in the rear and things like that, because that was going to be important with this doggo build, trying to break leadership more than just doing outright damage, because these little doggos aren't great for that. But we smashed the Varg all over the shop, which of course with Norska means if you beat the leader of a faction, you get to confederate them. And there we go, five settlements bagged instantly. I'd also been researching the few technologies I could to improve my doggos, giving them extra melee attack, weapon strength, and then some melee defense as well. And that's working on the Warhounds, the Ice Wolves, and the Skin Wolves. And in the way that I'm improving my doggos here, perhaps you'd like to improve your internet connection with the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. A VPN, of course, keeping your connection safe out on the interwebs. And with Surfshark, you can get that protection on every device you own, pretty much even your toaster, probably. It'll protect you from all the nasty hacker man attacks out there and all the big business trying to spy on what you look at so they can target you with ads. There's also a bunch of other handy little uses like being able to trick Netflix into thinking you're somewhere else in the world so that it shows you all the shows from that version of Netflix. The same thing with YouTube as well. If there's a video you can't see in your country, well, just pretend to be in a country that can see it and it's yours. You also get Surfshark alerts, which can tell you if your email address has been compromised anywhere. Surfshark antivirus, which is obviously an antivirus. The most private of privacy private search engines. And the ability to create an alternative ID, which will basically give you a fake identity so you can truly surf the web anonymously. Say hello to Oliver Ludwig Hoff from Germany. Oh, scheiße. So what the frick are you waiting for? Protect yourself with Surfshark VPN. There's even a Black Friday deal going on right now, which will give you up to an additional six months free if you use my sexy name as your promo code. There's a link below in the description. There is a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So if you don't like it or you find you don't really use it, you can get a full refund. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. All right, back here at turn 19 and I'm just about able to construct my tier three building for my real doggo boys. And of course, one of the nicest things about Norska is all the port settlements, which give you a ludicrous amount of money, which helps me about now to start recruiting skin wolves and get some real damage dealers in my army. Now, when I confederated the Varg, I got this army, which had a whole bunch of dogs in it. So I kept those and of course kept the Lord, but he doesn't have anything doggy about him. So we need to sort that out and we're going to give him a new name. Borkil Fjordbreaker will become Bork Dog. Perfect. I also realized that my starting hero wasn't very doggy either, so I had to give him a doggy name. And as he was a Fimir and not a dog, I simply called him Not-A-Dog, giving him a kind of Elder Scrolls Argonian vibe. 
I also realized that if one is truly going to give himself to the dog god, he must strive to please him. So I renamed all my settlements something dog related. So Serpent Jetty quite simply became Dog Jetty. The monolith of Katam became the monolith of Doggo. And Varg Camp? No, Wolf Camp. I also recruited myself a skin wolf Werkin, who is already a dog, so he didn't really need a doggy name, so I just called him Brian. Brian Gorex. Around this time, jealous of the fact that he didn't think of a doggo army first, especially as his name is Wolfric, Wolfric declares war on us. But that's fine, because that's who we want to go after next, because they got a whole load of territory. We just need to track down the Wolfric army himself, so we can beat him up and confederate him. I've been using Not A Dog to try and track down Wolfric and figuring he was over in the east because it's a long way from his start position, so how has he got territory over here? We eventually track him down to Frozen Landing, so that's where we're going next. I've pretty much got a full army of doggos now, a whole bunch of skin wolves. We're about ready to claim Norska. So I start moving my army towards Wolfric and Wolfric starts moving his armies towards me. Eventually I end up in this little situation where I am ready to ambush with a 70% chance, but if it fails, there's a stack and a half that I'd have to deal with in one go, and I feel like that would be too much for my army. So I fall back, somewhat foolishly though, right next to an enemy settlement garrison, but it's fine, I can retreat out of distance, I'm sure. I do end up getting the ambush though on the smaller Wolfric army, which is perfect for me, it means I can easily wipe them out. So I take the auto-resolve victory on that and prepare for the main Wolfric army. At least that's what I wanted to do, but the dwarfs, the Cracker Drek dwarfs, had other ideas, and they attacked the Altar of Spawns with just two units and expected my army to apparently do most of the work, so I did what any civilized Norse control would do, and I told them to fuck right off. Which of course meant that those dwarfs had to fight that battle themselves, and whoops. Sorry fellas, you should have told me you were going to go extinct if you lost the battle, maybe I would have helped you out, jeez. I feel bad now. Anyway, I fell back to replenish my army fully before I took on Wolfric and his full army. He did try to get me though before I had a chance to replenish, but I just retreated from this which would allow me to replenish as I was in my territory. Another one of my settlements got attacked by another Norskan army and I lost that, but it didn't really matter as I intended to take all of this territory by confederation anyway. Now on the next turn, Wolfric's army was ready to be attacked if I wanted to, but they were in the raiding camp stance, which gave them extra leadership and melee defense, something I really didn't want them to have because, well, honestly, I didn't trust my dog army that much. So I simply waited for them to attack me, which they of course did on the next turn, and here we go. We now got a big old fight with Wolfric to claim basically the rest of Norska. With this one, my center, my skin wolves, and my lords and heroes stayed patient and just waited back on the hill because the enemy was pushing its own doggos forward into my doggos and obviously I've got the superior doggos, especially as I outnumber them here on my right side. Over on my left side, it's a little bit more of an even situation, but we still have a little more. So I'm able to defeat the units on their left and right flanks, leaving only their center versus my entire army pretty much. So we let them come to us and then eventually charged a little bit downhill into the infantry with the skin wolves. They of course going to be pretty good at taking out infantry, although they're more anti-large, which was also handy to deal with things like this mammoth. Throg could do that as well. And then of course we were bringing in those flanking units, the ice wolves, that could get all those leadership penalties on these infantry units and break them as quickly as possible. While this was going on and his army was being completely destroyed, Wolfric himself was chasing a couple of doggos around in the hills, the absolute fool of a took, so now he's all on his own, about to face my entire army. And of course, Throg wants to attack Wolfric Scottish style, being sick all over his face and then hitting him with a massive club. A classic night out in Glasgow. And as you would expect, facing the anti-large Throg and the anti-large skin wolves, Wolfric doesn't last very long. And with that, his army is destroyed and thus, Confederation and most of Norska is now ours. Glorious. Not long after this, I had our boy Bork Dog move on to take on the Scaling, attack their leader, defeat him, and confederate them as well. Giving us pretty much the entirety of Norska, and you know what that comes with? A whole lot of port settlements. And as I mentioned earlier, they give a lot of money, about 800 each. And there's like 11 of them all around the coasts of Norska. And do you know what 11 times 800 is? That's right, a lot of fucking dogs. So with all this extra money, I decided to start creating more armies, which is when I realized that Sertha Ek is in my Lord Pool. And you know what we gotta do with him. Now at this point, Throck has conquered Norska. He's not sure what to do with his dog armies now. Until one day when he was out on one of his daily walks, he stumbled across a small little doggy that said, Girl, if you want more money for more doggos, you must kill in the name of the hound. 
Upon investigation, Throck realized that if he raised settlements in the name of the Hound, he could get up to 60% extra income from his port settlements, which are of course already giving him a whole ton of money. And do you know what 11 times 800 plus 60% equals? A lot more fucking docks, that's right. So Throck decided it's time to start taking some territory off those stinking humans in the name of the Hound. So we of course started with the nearby Kislev, raising their little towns in the name of our precious Hound God. Because, you know, God is just dog backwards. As I start to move through the Kislev lands, I notice the Ropsman clan is trying to make a claim on the settlement I just raised and expand their empire, which I simply cannot allow, so I must destroy them swiftly. And given that we've got two stacks versus their one, we are able to fully surround them and close in on them. They got thoroughly ran through very quickly. We then pushed on to their nearby city of Prague, which of course was raised in the name of the Hound. Up to this point, most of my skill points have been going into buffing up my dogs rather than Throg himself, and I've just got Icy Wrath to make all of my dog units even stronger. Now is the time to unveil the one and only Surther Ek and his chariot stack, because Ice Wolf chariots are indeed doggo units, so the dog god will allow it. We use this powerful force of doggy nature to assist in the destruction of Kislev and more raising in the name of the Hound. But oh! Kislev question the work of the Dog God, and they come after us, after Surtha Ek and his chariot stack. With an army of missiles? <laughs> I couldn't think of a more perfect army to mow down with a whole bunch of chariots, especially doggy icy wolf ones. Although, in all honesty, micromanaging 20 chariots is not easy to do, to be honest. So it wasn't the most fun of battles to fight and play. I was trying to use some chariots as missile units, some as actual chariots, some just sticking in melee. I couldn't honestly say it was a terribly effective army, at least not without some serious speed microing, but whatever, it did enough to get the victory. From here, we continued on and took the Tower of Crack with the help of Wolfric, who was getting his own little force together. Throg came along and took Fort Ostrosk, and then we declared war on the Great Orthodoxy as well, so we could take some of their territory off them. More destruction in the name of the Hound. And the Hound God King was pleased with our work as he granted us the first phase of the Hound's Gaze. Adding 20% to my port settlement income, which took my income from around 3,200 to about 6,000. Don't ask me how that math works. I also realized I forgot to rename some of my settlements, so the Bay of Blades became the Bay of Chew Toys. The Monolith of Borkill Bloody Hand became Monolith of Doggo Paw. The Forbidden Citadel, no, the Forbidden Dog House. And my personal favorite, Layer of the Troll King. No, 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 Layer of the Dog King, obviously. Absolutely glorious. Now, while Throg is of course known for being able to buff up trolls, he can also do a little bit for some doggos in skin walls. He can give them some extra regeneration here, some missile resistance, so we're going to take that for sure. There's also more skill point buffs to increase melee defense and to give the skin wolves terror. This is kind of part of the reason I took Throg is because he does have some doggo buffs. Moving along, we fight a few battles, we take a few settlements, Throg raises up Hellpit. I eventually move on to the mighty city of Prague, currently controlled by the Great Orthodoxy. I take that with complete legitimacy and honor. And then we move on to Sweet Mother Kislev itself, which I am able to Pyrrhic Victory auto-resolve. I don't know why that nearby army wasn't stationed there, but with the destruction of Kislev, we've now reached stage two in the gaze of the Hound, and that means 40% income from ports, more money for doggos. Now Kislev did come along and say, please give us peace, but I said no, and they said okay, and then they came and got me, and we had a fight on our hands, and luckily for me I had this nice steep hill that I could use, I just needed to draw the enemy up there, I had a little flanking party on the left hidden away, a flanking party on the right which ran into a single poor little unit, and then I had the Moors of Savagery, the Regiment of Renowned Skin Wolves, I have these with Stork, I gave them the banner that makes them invisible basically, and they are going to go and try and assassinate the enemy lord. Now I was being shot at so I did go up the hill to get out of range of that and to draw the enemy up the hill a little bit more which has succeeded and we are able to fight downhill making the enemy fight uphill and that is just an advantage for us in terms of some stats. The Moors of Savagery getting all over the enemy lord but she does have a little bit of help there. All in all it's not going to save them though, there are too many doggos surrounding them coming at them from all sides. The beauty of these armies is that they are so fast because you've got the skin wolves that are pretty quick anyway and then the warhounds and the wolves that are even quicker so there's just so much mobility the enemy has no time to react. From here we're able to push through this area taking the rest of the settlements around, taking out any armies along the way. Sertha Ek and one of my new boys Dag went to take out Erengrad until we realized it was worth 44 grand so we took that and we'll destroy it later. Throg, Wolfric, and your boy Bork Dog had headed over to the east to finish up what was left of Kislev there, and then they all headed back northwest towards Erengrad to help out Sertha Ek because he was having trouble retaking Erengrad. But now there was a whole bunch of Karl Franz Empire armies knocking around as well, so we were going to have to deal with them at some point. 
Even with about three and a half armies attacking Erengrad, I still couldn't get even a Pyrrhic victory, and I was starting to realize that Doggo armies aren't really that great in auto-resolve. Who would have thunk? The opportunity did arise though to take on Karl 1v1 with Throg's army. And he did actually have a pretty good army, a lot of demigriffs, some halberds, great swords. This could actually be a decent fight. And then I remembered, oh, I'm fighting the Empire, who generally are one of the easier factions in the old world to deal with. We charged forth into their front line of great swords. We flanked around to get after their cannons, getting all over them every which way we could until their leadership inevitably let them down. So we'd either destroyed or scared off most of the Empire armies in this region for now. And we were eventually finally able to get rid of Erengrad as well, and then onto one of Kislev's final remaining settlements, Castle von Rucken. And with the destruction of that, we had indeed hit phase three of the Hound's Gaze, setting off those armies that were supposed to kill, but I'm going to ignore those. More excitingly, we get the new hero, local nut job Kilgore Slaymame, who is riding a sort of doggo in a juggernaut, so he's a perfect fit and he gets a shitload of skill points to use to make him into an absolute beefcake as well. Lovely. At this point, I've got like six full doggo armies. I've got basically no income, but I'm ready to slaughter. So my plan is to push across the empire lands, freeing the empire people from the tyranny of freedom and happiness. So we began raising our way through all of these empire settlements, raising in the name of the hound still, even though it didn't really get us any benefit. We could only serve the doggo. We then pushed on to Norden on the northern coast, which happened to be Kislev's final settlement, and with the end of that came the end of them. I did have a fair few battles while pushing through as well, because like I said, the auto-resolve was pretty bad, so I often did have to fight the battles to either avoid losing or just to avoid losing units that would die even if it was a victory. The Empire, though, very easily munched down by Doggos, their leadership, their toughness, really not there in their infantry, which is what a lot of their armies tend to be. So a lot of the battles were pretty easy, usually pretty comfortable, easy defeats of the enemy, and the Empire didn't really have a leg to stand on. Although there was one battle where they did nearly get me, they beat me down pretty well, they beat away my skin wolves, which was obviously the strength of my army, so I had to make sure I used the rest of my doggos well to make up for that. So they came kind of close, but not quite enough, and I was able to win, although it was pretty close. So we stormed through this northern part of the Empire, raising everything we saw along the way, destroying every Empire faction that we came across. I had one of my new armies led by Lamont Dog, who came down straight from Norska to hit the west side of this land. And yeah, all of the poor Empire people were probably thinking it's some kind of doggo end times. So we got this northern part of the Empire lands utterly ruined. We then pushed on into the Reichland to try and finish off Karl Franz and his boys once and for all. We struck down Altdorf, which was obviously a mighty blow for the Empire. I also ended up with a defensive alliance with the Chaos Dwarfs, and I was able to recruit some of their doggos. If only I could have done that sooner. Eventually, I end up in this big, massive situation with pretty much all of my armies in one place, the Empire bringing two and a half stacks very bravely to face us, which ultimately ends up with me putting four stacks against their two and a half. And, well, I'm still only predicted a Pyrrhic victory from this, but we'll see what we can do. We charge our doggo boys headlong into the enemy, of course only their first army there for now. But the thing about having so many armies in a battle is that the reinforcements can't all come at the same time, you can only have 40 units on the field each, so the rest just have to wait outside until something dies and then they can come in, which means the units kind of trickle in one at a time and, well, when that happens against a full army, those units just die very quickly. Not that I was really expecting the Empire to pull it out of the bag and win this here, but Kilgore Slaymame is having a great time though, he's murdering everyone in sight, killing, slaying and maiming, creating gore all over the place, really living up to his name. Eventually he gets into a 1v1 with Karl Franz himself, until Throg decides to do it Scottish style again and gives him the old sicken club. Classic Throg. He also uses another advanced technique for a Scottish person or troll, a kick. And with that, Deathclaw goes down, as does Karl Franz, and that's the end of that one. With those armies out the way, we're free to take out the rest of the settlements in this area and pretty much take out the rest of the Empire. And with that, these Empire lands were now free from the tyranny of men. But oh, what's this? Did you really think I was going to make it through a video without insulting or killing some elves? You don't know me at all. Let's kill some elves! With the elf blood shed, now all is right with the world. The land is truly now free of all forms of tyranny. And the dog god woofs with pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Remember to check out the links below if you are interested. If you're looking for more elf killing content, I've got this video about cows. Check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the future.